Hello friends, welcome to my Sakshi Coaching channel. Now in this video, I am going to read the chapter 17 in NCRT Biology that is Breathing and Exchange of Gases. So let's start. As you have read earlier, oxygen is utilized by organisms to indirectly break down nutrient uh, molecules like glucose and to derive energy for performing various activities. Carbon dioxide which is harmful is also released during the above catabolic reactions. It is therefore evident that O2 has to be continuously provided to the cells and CO2 produced by the cells have to be released out. This process of exchange of oxygen from uh, the atmosphere with CO2 produced by the cells is called breathing and commonly known as respiration. Place your hands on your chest, you can feel the chest moving up and down. You know that it is due to the breathing. How do we breathe? The respiratory organ and uh, the mechanism of the breathing are described in the following sections of this chapter. 17.1 Respiratory organs Mechanism of uh, breathing vary among different uh, group of animals uh, depending on, uh, mainly on their uh, habitats and level of organization. Lower invertebrates like sponges, cylinderates, uh, flatworms, etc. Uh, exchange O2 with CO2 by simple diffusion over their entire body surface. Earthworm use their moist cuticle and insect have a network of tubes, tracheal tubes to uh, transport atmospheric air within the body. Special vascularized structures uh, called gills are used by the most of the aquatic arthropods and molluscals uh, whereas vascularized bags uh, called lungs are used by the terrestrial forms for the exchange of gases. Among vertebrates, fishes use uh, gills whereas reptiles, birds and mammals respire through the lungs. Amphibians like uh, frogs can respire through their moist skin also. Mammals have a well developed uh, respiratory system. 17.1.1 Human Respiratory System We have a pair of external nostrils opening out above the upper lips. It leads to a nasal chamber through the uh, nasal passage. The nasal chamber opens into the nasopharynx, uh, which is a portion of pharynx, the common passage for food and air. Nasopharynx opens through the glottis of the larynx region into the trachea. Larynx is a cartilaginous box which helps in the sound production and hence called the sound box. During swallowing, a uh, glottis can be covered by the thin uh, elastic cartilaginous flap called epiglottis to prevent the entry of the food into the larynx. Trachea is a straight tube extending up to uh, the mid thoracic cavity which divides at the uh, level of fifth thoracic vertebra into a right and left primary bronchi. Each bronchi uh, undergoes repeated divisions to form the secondary and tertiary bronchi and bronchioles ending up in a very thin terminal bronchioles. The trachea, primary, uh, secondary and tertiary bronchi and initial bronchioles are supported by incomplete cartilaginous rings. Each terminal bronchiole gives rise to a number of very thin irregular walled and vascularized back like structures called alveoli. The branching network or uh, branch, uh, the branching network of bronchi, bronchioles and alveoli comprise the lungs. We have two lungs which are covered by the double layered pleura with pleural fluid between them. It reduces friction on the lung surface. The outer pleural membrane is in close contact with the thoracic uh, lining whereas the inner pleural membrane is in contact with the lung surface. The part starting with the external no nostrils up to the terminal bronchioles constitute the conducting part whereas the alveoli and their ducts from the respiratory or exchange part of the respiratory system. The conducting part transports the atmospheric air to alveoli, clears it from foreign particles, humidifies and also brings the air to body temperature. Exchange part is the site of actual uh, diffusion of O2 and CO2 between blood and atmospheric air. The lungs are situated in thoracic chamber which is anatomically an airtight chamber. The thoracic chamber is formed dorsally by the vertebral column, ventrally by the sternum, laterally by the uh, ribs and on the lower side by the dome shaped diaphragm. The anatomical setup of uh, lungs in thorax is such that any change in the volume of the thoracic cavity will be reflected in the lung pulmonary cavity. Such an arrangement is essential for breathing as we cannot directly alter the pulmonary volume. 
Respiration uh, involves the following steps. First, breathing or pulmonary ventilation by which atmospheric air is drawn in and CO2 rich alveolar air is released out. Second, diffusion of gases O2 and CO2 across the alveolar membrane. Three, transport of gases by the blood. Fourth, diffusion of O2 and CO2 between the blood and tissues. Fifth, utilization of the O2 by the cells for catabolic reactions and resultant release of CO2, cellular respiration as uh, dealt in the chapter uh, 14 respiration. 17.2 Mechanism of Breathing Breathing involves two stages, inspiration during which atmospheric air is drawn in and expiration by which the alveolar air is released out. The movement of air into and out of the lungs is carried out by a creating a pressure gradient between the lungs and the atmosphere. Inspiration can occur if the pressure within the lungs that is intrapulmonary pressure is less than the atmospheric pressure that is there is a negative pressure in the lungs with respect to the atmospheric pressure. Similarly, expiration takes place when the intrapulmonary pressure is higher than the atmospheric pressure. The diaphragm and a specialized set of muscles external and internal intercostal between the ribs help in generation of such gradients. Inspiration is initiated by the contraction of diaphragm uh, which increases the volume of the thoracic chamber in the anterior posterior axis. The contraction of external, inter, uh, external uh, intercostal uh, muscles lifts up the ribs, uh, the sternum causing the uh, increase in the volume of the thoracic chamber in the dorsoventral axis. The overall increase in the thoracic volume causes a similar increase in pulmonary volume. An increase in pulmonary volume decreases and uh, the intrapulmonary pressure to less than the atmospheric pressure which forces the air from outside to move into the lungs that is inspiration. Relaxation uh, of the uh, diaphragm and intercostal muscles return the diaphragm and uh, sternum to their normal positions and reduce the thoracic volume and thereby the pulmonary volume. This leads to an increase in the intrapulmonary pressure to slightly above the atmospheric pressure causing the expulsion of air from the lungs that is expiration. We have the ability to increase the strength of inspiration and expiration with the help of the additional muscles in the abdomen. On an average a healthy human breathes 12 to 16 times per minute. The volume of air uh, involved in breathing movements can be estimated by using spirometer which helps in the clinical assessment of pulmonary functions. 17.2.1 Respiratory Volumes and Capacities Tidal Volume Volume of air inspired or expired during a normal respiration it is approximately uh, 500 ml that is a healthy man can inspire or expire approximately 6000 to 8000 uh, ml of air per minute. Inspiratory reserve volume IRV additional volume of air a person can inspire by a forcible inspiration this average uh, 2500 ml to 3000 uh, ml. Expiratory reserve volume ERV Additional volume of air a person can expire by a forcible expiration. This averages uh, 1000 ml to 1100 ml. Residual volume RV volume of air remaining in the lungs uh, even after a forcible expiration. This averages 1100 ml to 1200 ml. By adding up a few respiratory volumes described above, one can derive uh, various uh, pulmonary capacities which can be used in clinical diagnosis. Inspiratory capacity Total volume of air a person can inspire after a normal expiration. This includes the tidal volume and inspiratory reserve volume TV plus IRV. Expiratory uh, capacity EC Total volume of air a person can expire after a normal inspiration. This includes the tidal volume and expiratory reserve volume TV plus ERV. Functional residual capacity FRC. Volume of air that will remain in the lungs after a normal expiration. Uh, this includes ERV plus RV. Vital capacity VC. The maximum volume of air uh, a person can breathe in after a forced expiration. This includes ERV, TV and IRV or the maximum volume of air a person can breathe out after a forced inspiration. Total lung capacity, total volume of air accommodated in the lungs at the end of the forced inspiration. This includes RV, ERV, TV 
and IRV or vital capacity plus residual volume. 17.3 exchange of gases. Alveoli are the primary sites of exchange of gases. Exchange of uh, gases also occur between the blood and tissues. O2 and CO2 are exchanged in these uh, sites by simple diffusion mainly based on the pressure concentration gradient. Solubility of gases as well as thickness of the membranes involved in the diffusion are also uh, some important factors that can affect the rate of diffusion. Pressure contributed by an individual gas in a mixture of gases is called partial pressure and is represented by PO2 for uh, oxygen and PCO2 for carbon dioxide. Partial pressures of these two gases in the atmospheric air and the two sides of diffusion are given in the table 17.1 and in the figure 17.3. The data given in the table clearly indicates a concentration gradient for oxygen from alveoli to blood and blood to tissues. Similarly, a gradient is a present for CO2 in the opposite direction that is from tissues to blood and blood to alveoli. As the solubility of CO2 is 20 to 25 times higher than that of the O2, the amount of CO2 that can diffuse through the diffusion membrane per unit difference in partial pressure is much higher uh, compared to that of O2. The diffusion membrane is made up of three major layers, namely the thin squamous epithelium of alveoli, the endothelium of alveolar capillaries and the basement substance in between them. However, its total thickness is uh, much less than a millimeter. Therefore, all the factors in our body are favorable for diffusion of O2 from alveoli to tissues and that of CO2 from tissues to alveoli. 17.4 Transport of Gases Blood is the medium of transport for O2 and CO2. About 97% of the O2 is transported by RBCs in the blood. The remaining 3% of the O2 is carried in a dissolved state through the plasma. Nearly 20 to 25% of the CO2 is transported by RBCs whereas 70% of it is carried as bicarbonates. About 7% of the CO2 is carried in a dissolved state through plasma. 17.4.1 Transport of Oxygen Hemoglobin is a red colored iron containing a pigment present in the RBCs. O2 can bind with the hemoglobin with, uh, in a reversible manner to form oxyhemoglobin. Each hemoglobin molecule can carry a maximum of, of 4 molecules of O2. Binding of oxygen with the hemoglobin is primarily related to partial pressure of O2. Partial pressure of CO2, uh, hydrogen ion concentration and temperature are the other factors which can interfere with this binding. A sigmoid curve is obtained uh, when percentage saturation of hemoglobin with O2 is plotted against the PO2. This curve is called oxygen dissociation curve and is highly useful in studying the effects of factors like PCO2, H plus ion concentration, etc. on binding of O2 with hemoglobin. In the alveoli, where uh, there is high PO2, low uh, PCO2, lesser H plus ion concentration and lower temperature, the factors are all favorable for the formation of oxyhemoglobin. Whereas in the tissues where a low a PO2, high PCO2, high H plus ion concentration and higher temperature exist, the conditions are favorable for dissociation of the oxygen from oxyhemoglobin. This clearly indicates that O2 gets bound to hemoglobin in the lung surface and gets dissociated at the, at the tissues. Every 100 ml of oxygenated blood can deliver around 5 ml of O2 to the tissues under normal physiological conditions. 17.4.2 uh, Transport of Carbon Dioxide CO2 is carried by a hemoglobin as carb amino hemoglobin about 20 to 25%. This binding is related to the partial pressure of CO2. PO2 is the major uh, factor which could affect this binding. When PCO2 is high and PO2 is low as in the tissues, more binding of the carbon dioxide occurs whereas uh, when the PCO2 is low and PO2 is high as in alveoli, dissociation of CO2 from carb amino hemoglobin takes place that is CO2 which is uh, bound to the hemoglobin from tissues uh, is delivered at the alveoli. RBCs contain a very high concentration of the enzyme carbonic anhydrase and minute quantities of the same is present in the plasma too. 
This enzyme facilitates the following reaction in both the directions. CO2 plus H2O in the presence of carbonic anhydrase gives H2CO3 in the presence of carbonic anhydrase. Again, it gives HCO3 minus plus H plus. And this is a reversible process. At the tissue site uh, where partial pressure of CO2 is high due to the catabolism, CO2 diffuses uh, into blood, RBCs and plasma and forms HCO3- and H plus ions. At the alveolar site uh, where PCO2 is low, the reaction proceeds in the opposite direction leading to the formation of CO2 and H2O. Thus, CO2 wrapped as a uh, bicarbonate at tissue level and transported to the alveoli is released out as CO2. Every 100 ml of uh, deoxygenated blood delivers approximately 4 ml of CO2 to the alveoli. 17.5 Regulation of Respiration Human beings have a significant ability to maintain and moderate the respiratory rhythm to suit the demands of the body tissues. This is done by the neural, by the neural uh, systems. A specialized center uh, present in the medulla region of the brain called respiratory rhythm center is primarily responsible uh, for this regulation. Another center present in the pons region of the uh, brain called pneumotaxic center uh, can moderate the functions of the respiratory rhythm center. Neural signal from this center can reduce the duration of inspiration and thereby alter the respiratory rate. A chemosensitive area is situated uh, adjacent to the rhythm center which is highly sensitive to CO2 and H plus or hydrogen ions. Increase in these substances can activate this center which in turn can signal the rhythm center to make necessary adjustment in the respiratory process by which these substances can eliminate it. Receptors associated with the aortic arch and carotid artery also can uh, recognize changes in the CO2 and H plus ion concentration and send necessary signals to the rhythm center for remedial actions. The role of oxygen uh, in the regulation of respiratory rhythm is quite insignificant. 17.6 Disorders of Respiratory System Asthma is a difficulty in breathing causing wheezing due to inflammation of bronchi and bronchioles. Emphysema is a chronic disorder in which alveolar walls are uh, damaged due to of which respiratory surface is decreased. One of the major causes of this is cigarette smoking. Occupational respiratory disorders. In certain industries, especially those involving grinding or uh, stone breaking, so much uh, dust is produced that the defense mechanism of the body cannot fully cope with the situation. Long ex exposure uh, can give rise to the inflammation leading to the fibrosis, proliferation of fibrous uh, tissue and uh, thus causing serious lung damage. Workers in such uh, industries should wear protective mask. Summary, cells utilize oxygen for metabolism and produce energy along with the substances like uh, carbon dioxide which is harmful. Animals have evolved different mechanisms for transport of oxygen to the cells and for removal of carbon dioxide from there. We have a well developed respiratory system comprising two lungs and associated ear passages to perform this function. The first step in the respiration is the breathing by which atmospheric air is uh, taken in inspiration and alveolar air is uh, released out expiration. Exchange of O2 and CO2 between the deoxygenated blood and alveoli, transport of these uh, gases throughout the body by blood, exchange of O2 and CO2 between the oxygenated blood and uh, tissues and utilization of O2 by these cells that is cellular respiration are the other steps involved. Inspiration and expiration are carried out by creating pressure gradients between the atmosphere and the alveoli with the help of specialized muscles, intercostals and diaphragm. Volumes of air involved in these activities can be estimated with the help of spirometer and are of clinical significance. Exchange of O2 and CO2 at the alveoli and tissues occur by diffusion. Rate of diffusion is dependent on the uh, partial pressure gradients of O2, uh, PO2 and uh, CO2 that is PCO2. Their solubility as well as uh, thickness of the diffusion surface. These factors in our body facilitate a diffusion of O2 from alveoli to deoxygenated blood as well as the oxygenated blood to the tissues. 
the factors are favorable for the diffusion of co2 in the opposite direction that is from tissues to alveoli oxygen is transported mainly as oxyhemoglobin in uh, in the alveoli uh, where pco2 where po2 is higher uh, o2 gets uh, bound to hemoglobin uh, which is easily dissociated at the tissues where po2 is low and pco2 and h plus ion concentration are high nearly 70% of the carbon dioxide is, is transported as bicarbonates hco3 minus with the help of the enzyme carbonic anhydrase 20 to 25% of the carbon dioxide is carried by the hemoglobin as carb amino hemoglobin in the tissues where pco2 is high it gets bound to the blood whereas in the alveoli where pco2 is low and po2 is high it gets removed from the blood respiratory rhythm is maintained by the respiratory center in the medulla region of the brain a pneumotaxic center in the pons region of the brain and a chemosensitive area in the medulla can alter the respiratory mechanisms chapter completed if you like this video please like share and subscribe to my channel uh, to get more videos Thank you.